Hello there folks, I'm Dan Brown from a sort of interest in life.com. You're joining me on board good old narrowboat Tilly and today we're going to talk about my four winters afloat. I may be speaking a little bit early for this winter in particular, still being in February, but I really just wanted to take a moment and look back and, well, show a load of photos and clips that might get lost otherwise if I don't use them very soon and obviously use some of the original super snowy footage from my first winter on board and all of those sorts of things really. So in just a second we'll have loads of scenery and stuff on the screen while I talk away at you and I suppose really I think that we'll just go to the first winter and then have a quick look and talk about each winter's features and how it sort of affected life on the canal and then talk about this winter that we're currently in because I've got to say I genuinely believe that if this had been my first winter on board and my first sort of experience of any sort of winter on board, then it may well have been my last, to be honest. I think my boat life would have been completely different had this have been my first winter. And at the very least, I would have ended up not being on the canal cruising around. I would have ended up just being in a marina, sat tight, trying to make everything as easy as I possibly could, because this has been a pretty unpleasant way in winter. As many of you may know, well, I won't go into it now, we'll get to that in sequence towards the end of this video, but it's been an unbelievably wet winter since the end of October, really. So, without further ado, let's get stuck into winter number one. So if we kick things off with this absolute classic footage from my first ever winter on board and this is footage that I've used a million times since as there's never been anything quite like it in my life in terms of snowfall yet alone to have it happen on the first winter that I'd bought a boat. Not entirely how I envisioned that winter going but it certainly led to some fantastic beautiful moments like this and real sort of stereotypical canal moments of your smoky chimney sticking out the top of a snow covered boat in just ridiculous ridiculous snowy winter environments like that. I mean just look at what's on the screen now. Fantastic memories and great fun at the time but a little bit difficult it's got to be said. It was a very cold winter in general even before all this snow came down so that led to an awful lot of very chilly bike rides in and out of work in the early mornings and late at night and it's where I first learnt to start keeping my bike inside the boat if I had to be up and off to work early in the morning because you can imagine leaving a bike out in these conditions. It was a very cold seat to sit on, I'll say that much. Now if we skip to the second winter and I'll throw in a load of photos from not only this second winter afloat but also my third winter afloat as they were very similar really in terms of makeup and how the weather was. And for those two winters, I also spent a full five months on a paid winter mooring just down the road from my friends I used to live up in Western Rin around the Cheek Aqueduct and Tunnel, that sort of area. And so they were very similar winters in very similar places. And this was one of the greatest mornings that I've ever woken up to because I had to bike up to my friend's house to then get a lift into town for work in the morning. And as you can imagine, boating up through the snow, cycling through the snow on the towpath, and then just driving down the roads. It was one of those iconic moments again, the great memory to look back on. But really, those two winters, this was the 13 to 14 and 14 to 15 winters, they had a lot of mixed weather. Um, not loads of snow, just a few general dustings like that one you just saw me boating in. And really, I think... There wasn't too much rain, it was quite windy I think the 2014 to 15 winter but because we had like sort of nice cold weather we had beautiful scenes like this of these great sunsets and sunrises, frost covering everything and very often the frost so thick on the fields and that that even that could pass as a good bit of snow covering and I got a lot of walking done as well partly due to being moored up in an excellent place to get out to the Berwyn Hills around Langoflin. But of course, as this photo shows, there's certainly a lot of water coming down from the sky at some points, unfortunately. But really, I think that it's probably, I don't know if I'd say that the 2014 to 15 winter was probably one of my favourites. As I didn't realise at the time it would be the last time, potentially, that I'd be able to have my winter mooring up by my friends and what have you. But really, I think it was just the fact that it was that ideal spot to be able to just... Well, carry on settling into boat life three years into it all and again I mean some of these pictures and the memories that come attached to them are just absolutely fantastic you see that's a 
photo from one of my bike rides into work there under the trees and these little bits of snow coverings and walking up in the hills. I think those two winters really will go down as the classics. As the first one, even though we had all that snow, because it was my first winter, there was a lot of figuring out and a lot of general sort of difficulty in working out exactly what I needed and the fire kept going out and it was really, really cold in the middle of the night and at four in the morning I'd be trying to stoke it up and what have you. Um, again, this is a little bit of video here from another one of those light dustings of snow and you can see it's a bit thicker up on the hills in the distance and again, those are the hills that I've walked up over those two winters, my middle two winters as they're currently called I suppose, but... Again, I mean, how beautiful is this? And like I say, because of that cold weather, having these great blue skies and sunny days to actually, like, well, just enjoy it all under. Anyway, moving on to the winter that we are currently in. And this is, unfortunately, this 20-second clip sums up what the vast majority of it has been like in all honesty and reality. You're about to see some lovely sunny pictures, but I cannot explain to you how consistently bad the weather has been. From late October right through to even now in mid-February, we have had probably more rain, well, I'd say almost certainly more rain than I've ever seen in my life in one winter, and very little actual cold weather, only a couple of days with any frost in them, and very little of this sort of proper sunny, beautiful blue sky days. I mean, you're literally seeing months pass and only have like three or four actual days without rain in them. And that, you can imagine, has made life extremely difficult. And I would say, if this had been my first winter afloat, then it could have been my last winter afloat. As the amount of cycling in just horrific muddy conditions that I've done and coming up to roads that are flooded and you're literally pedalling and having your feet go under the water level as there's just that much water that you're going through. And again, it's, it's a lot of this sort of like not necessarily pouring down on some days but even the good days which are these misty days are clearly not great days and nothing like the beautiful sunny cold winters days of previous winters which definitely doesn't help to sort of improve morale as everything i add is well, everything i've got still is constantly covered in mud from cycling down roads like this and that's a particularly good part of the road without getting to the muddy towpath that we'll see in just a second and again you can imagine that just biking out and in and out and in through all sorts of mud and just sometimes even if you're on the sort of clean mill main roads just getting absolutely soaked and covered in total like water from the stuff falling out of the sky and the stuff that's splashing up from the ground has soaked me through so much that it's like you get on board, have to put your clothes out to dry over the fire on the back of the door and it creates that much condensation inside and then you've got that happening on the boat and every time you brush against the walls you put a load of mud over everything. So it's been that sort of constant battle and as I've said in videos before and I will do since, we're extremely lucky in this area that I'm um, in in Shropshire and the Welsh border areas we don't have serious flooding but even with that sort of getting off lightly compared to some places in the country I've literally been biking through flooded roads and lanes that after half an hour to an hour after me passing there's literally been fire engines called out to rescue somebody from their car and stuff like that so there's been so much water around and there still is going to be by the looks of it. So as you can probably imagine, it's been extremely frustrating to have this weather for five months, month after month. And that's why I say that if this was my first winter afloat, then it probably would have finished me off before I'd really got going. Because not only would it have been the frustrating thing that it's been this year of literally having the vast majority of my trips and commutes and even just quick 10 minutes up to me friend's house from the canal and then back down to the boat later on. I've got so like multiple times in a day and just little trips like that. And had that have been my first experience of winter on board, without having all of the great experiences of previous winters and the beautiful snow and the beautiful crisp clear mornings to bike into work and that sort of stuff, and instead just had this winter, um, especially being out on the towpath moving around without a winter mooring spot 
I don't think I would have lasted. I would have immediately, or at least as quick as possible, got myself into a marina so that I could be set up in a fixed place without having to go down all these different country lanes and all of the really muddy bits of towpath that I have to go on. And obviously then I would have been much easier for people to get to and to get out two people from a fixed spot. And I think that would have probably been my first port of call. And then heading into the next like year and the spring and summer would have been great. And then I probably would have started to dread the end of the year coming around. And I just don't know what it would have done to me being out on the towpath like I have this year in these conditions without any of the real super positive experiences from the previous winters and previous years and just really getting used to, right, if I get covered in mud, I've got to leave my coat and everything on the back of the door. I've got to get changed out on the stern in the rain so I don't drag the mud in and get it on everything. And it's really just all these little things that I've learned as I go along that it's been trying to like sort out. And even still, I'm still walking so much mud into the boat and getting it in the carpet as I speak. But, oh well, not literally as I speak, of course. But um, yeah, I just really wanted to share a few thoughts and share loads and loads of photos in this video, really. And ultimately, I think going forwards, this has been a winter that will set the benchmark for what I consider a bad or difficult period of boat life going forwards. As it's not as if we've been having terrible flooding that some parts of the country have been having, which we've been extremely fortunate to avoid. But more so the general like hassle and awkwardness of just everyday life and it's like oh i need to get supplies right put your waterproofs on you're going to get soaked even just walking down the towpath at ellesmere you're going to get soaked walking back out to the boat and then well, you're going to have to dry out and like i say it's all about dragging the condensation into the boat and i don't know it's been an interesting time but i suppose on that note we'll wrap things up and say let's look forward to some sunnier brighter drier months ahead and I hope that you will check out my other videos for literally hundreds of boating videos on this channel. Feel free also to check out my short boat life Kindle books. You'll find links to those and all sorts of other boaty things in the description below. But I really would, I've said it before, I'll say it again now that ultimately and ideally I would rather be known for my writing than these videos which surprises some people but I don't know check out me books if you want I suppose but anyway until the next time have an absolutely fantastic day keep it boat worthy keep it winter worthy and of course farewell <laughs>